Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello, welcome back. So guys, today is the beginning of Diwali. And so Diwali, what is that? Well, it's the Festival of Lights. As we had said in, I think, a video yesterday, we were talking about how many traditions have a Festival of Lights. Well, we kind of have Christmas. It's sort of about lights. Well, yeah, when you think about Christmas, you do think about, you know, Christmas tree lights, lights everywhere. It's just a festive, you know, happy time. Very happy time. A beat, yep. So here we see the Empire State Building is lit orange to honor Diwali. And so when we look at it, what is it? Well, it's one of the biggest Indian festivals and also a major occasion in Nepal. This festival has great religious significance for Hindus, Sikhs, Jains, and the Nepalese. In India, Diwali is, is now considered to be more of a national festival and is enjoyed by most Indians regardless of faith. It is commonly celebrated by decorating homes with lamps, candles, bursting of firecrackers and sparklers, eating sweets and other mouth-watering dishes, uh, praying to the gods and goddesses, observing religious rituals, and wearing new dresses, and sending wishes and gifts to one. It sounds so nice. It does sound very, very Christmassy, isn't yes, it? Yes, it does. And so it, it's a celebration of the victory of light over darkness, of good over evil, and of knowledge over ignorance. So on this day, dias, candles, lamps are all placed around the house to light the way to knowledge and victory. Each house is decorated with various assortments of colored lights and dias. The entire country is bathed in the soft glow of light and warmth emanating from each household, making it a truly wondrous sight to behold. It does sound like a festive, Christmassy type of time. And it feels so inclusive. Yeah, inclusive is good. You know, it's, it's a, multi a multi-faith celebration again as well. And so the celebration of Diwali also serves as a cleansing ritual, one that signifies letting go of all the past year's worries and troubles. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> wouldn't that be a nice thing to do? I mean, that's, that's what we need to do right now, right? About once a week, yeah. Yeah, the way 2020 has been. And stepping into the light. And these days leading up to Diwali, families uh, get together to clean, to renovate, and to decorate their respective households and workplaces with different decorations and, and things. As we see here, this family right here, uh, yeah, mandala, and it's beautiful. And there's a lot of flowers and there's a lot of candles and a lot of celebration. And as we had said before, a lot of wonderful food and sweets. And boy, do I love Indian cuisine. Oh, yum. It's my favorite. It is absolutely my favorite. So Diwali marks the onset of winter and the beginning of all things new, both in nature and humanity. On this day, celebrants dress themselves in their finest brand, brand new clothing and offering prayers to various gods and goddesses according to their own family traditions. So as far as its history, it can find its roots in ancient India, and it's likely that it began as a significant harvest festival. As with many Hindu festivals, the origins of Diwali differ from region to region, which can be vastly attributed to the culture of stories and legends being passed down through generations through the spoken word. Some are of the belief that Diwali is a celebration of the goddesses Lakshmi's marriage to Lord Vishnu, some even consider this day as the auspicious occasion of her birthday, as it is a popular belief that she was born in the month of Kartika on a new moon. And in certain regions like Bengal, the festival is dedicated to goddess Kali, the dark goddess of strength. In other regions, devotees offer prayers to the elephant-headed god Lord Ganesh, but in all mythology and history, Diwali marks the day that Lord Rama turned return to Ahoya after being in exile for 14 long years to reclaim his throne and fulfill his duty. His return is all the more significant due to his victory over the demon king Ravana. It was in celebration of their king's return that the people of Ahoya eliminated the kingdom with Diaz to light his way home. So yeah, it's the festival of light and, and again, Rama and Krishna are both incarnations of Vishnu. And Sita 
and Radhe are incarnations of Lakshmi. And ultimately, all gods are one god, and all goddesses are one goddess. And ultimately, there is Brahman, which is that the all. I just love how inclusive it is. Well, what happens with uh, in in the Indus Valley tradition is that when something new comes along, they absorb it. Mm. And it doesn't mean they throw out the old, but they just add it. And so that's part of why they say there are so many goddess, gods and goddesses. Uh, it's just simply because they, they never throw any away. You know, everybody has their own... Um, there are own things that they they vibrate with, resonate with, are pulled towards. And so instead of trying to convert people, they just, you know, <laughs> I shared that story before about how the Christian miss- missionaries came to India and were telling uh, some Hindu people all about Jesus. And they, they just told them all about everything that happened. And at the end, they said, would you like to invite Jesus in your heart? And they said, yes, yes. And so they did, and then they ended up, you know, giving them crosses, and they took crosses, you know, to represent their faith. And then they put them right up there on their altar, along with Krishna and Vishnu and Brahma and, and all Shiva and all the other gods and goddesses, and gave reference to, you know, Jesus as well. But they didn't throw their old beliefs away. I just feel that's the way things should be. Yeah, yeah, instead of always trying to convert people, convert, 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 Just accept and allow, you know, allow for diversity. Diversity is beautiful. You know, one size does not fit all. And when you get down to it, forcing and, you know, which has happened so often in the Western culture, forcing others to convert. And in other faiths, too, it's it's just something that always leads to eternal conflict. It does, yeah. So it's, it's a beautiful festival, and it's one of hope, and it's one of promise and joy. I love it. Yeah, beautiful, most definitely. So happy Diwali out there for everybody. As always, thank you for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. God bless and namaste. Namaste.